What makes for a better archaeological find? Something that can be explained immediately, or something that defies explanation no matter how much it's studied by experts? If you ask us, everything is made better by a touch of mystery, and there's more than a touch of mystery about the archaeological finds you're about to see in this video. In 2013, the skeleton of a giant warrior nicknamed Goliath was discovered in Santa Mer, Romania. Dating back to 1600 BCE, the warrior stood over 6 feet and 6 inches tall, significantly taller than the average stature of the people at that time. Found during construction work on a bypass in the municipality of Karai, this discovery has perplexed archaeologists. The skeleton is definitely that of a Bronze Age warrior from the period between the 4th and 2nd millennium BCE. Analysis conducted by an anthropologist in Targu Muris revealed that the individual belonged to the Nordic race. The burial site, part of a prehistoric settlement, also included houses, wells, ovens, and large food storage spaces. Legends of giants extend throughout Romania, with various giant skeletons unearthed in different locations. Although these discoveries have attracted attention, scientists have not definitively confirmed their authenticity. The interest in these findings has spread internationally, attracting specialists from Germany, Hungary, and the United States. Confirmation of these legends by anthropologists could significantly alter our understanding of human history. Ongoing investigations, including further analysis by an anthropologist in Cluj, hold the potential to provide more insights into this remarkable warrior. The world is covered in petroglyphs left behind by our ancient ancestors, but perhaps none are so mysterious as those you'll find on the island of Ometepe in the middle of Lake Nicaragua. The first Nahuatl-speaking occupants of the island weren't the first people to live on the island, and so the petroglyphs are thought to be the work of an older civilization. There are over 2,000 inscribed or engraved boulders on the island, with the earliest examples thought to date back around 3,000 years. Some of the motifs seen in the works are comparable to designs seen on pottery excavated on the island many years ago. The culture that left behind these petroglyphs did not also leave behind any written records. Because of that, we can't say whether their work ought to be interpreted as symbolic, ritual, literal, or merely artistic. We don't know who they were, what they believed in, or why they spent so much time shaping the rocks around them when they seemingly left no other permanent records of their civilization. Perhaps these petroglyphs are an entire historical record of their culture, and we just don't know how to translate them. The Peterborough Stone in Canada features hundreds of petroglyphs, which could have been created by Algonquin Native Americans around a thousand years ago, or by Scandinavian traders several thousand years ago. This latter theory challenges the traditional understanding of European presence in the New World. The petroglyphs depict animals, solar symbols, geometric shapes, boats, and human figures in a style reminiscent of the Old World. Boston University professor Robert Schock has identified a large ship on the stone drawn in a Scandinavian style, featuring a steering oar found only on ships longer than 100 feet. Harvard biologist Barry Fell and archaeologist David Kelly associate the glyphs with a North African proto tifinog script, which was allegedly used by the Scandinavians. Fell controversially claims that the petroglyphs documented the commercial activities of a Bronze Age Nordic king, while Kelly believed they were left by Scandinavian traders. The estimated dates for the petroglyphs vary between 1700 BCE and 800 BCE. Kelly suggests a trade route connecting the Niger River to Scandinavia, which the Scandinavians extended to Canada. The petroglyph site, known as the Teaching Rocks, holds significance in native legends as an entrance to the spirit world. While some inscriptions are attributed to later Algonquin artists, certain figures and astronomical signs indicate non-Algonquin influences, and remain unexplained even if you discount the Scandinavian origin theory. In October 2021, a 40-foot-long shipwreck 
made a sudden and dramatic appearance on a Latvian beach after being revealed by shifting sands. The wreck, which isn't far from the Latvian capital of Riga, is thought to be the remains of a long-lost British Royal Navy warship. There isn't much of it left, but the combination of oak planks and copper nails in the hull is consistent with the types of vessels that were used by the British Royal Navy during the 19th century. Similar designs were also used for long-distance merchant vessels, though, so it can't be said with certainty that this was a warship. Experts in the UK agree with the opinion of their Latvian colleagues and have suggested that it was a warship that got lost on patrol in the Baltics. The question is, which warship? And that's one that the experts are still stuck on. By the 19th century, the British Navy was very good at keeping records. When a ship went missing, they knew about it and they wrote it down. There are several unexplained disappearances of British vessels in the Baltics during the 19th century, and so there are several possible candidates to be the one that's now on a Latvian beach. With so little of it left, it might never be possible to identify it. We're heading to India because we have a very strange carving inside a temple to look at. This is Panchavarni Swami Temple in Warayur, Tamil Nadu, and it's more than 2,000 years old. That means the carvings on its wall are also presumably more than 2,000 years old, and so we have a problem. Here, plain as day, we see a carving of a man riding a bicycle. That shouldn't be possible because the bicycle wasn't invented until the 18th century. Still, though, there doesn't seem to be anything else that this carving could represent. Whatever this person is sitting on has two wheels, spokes, a frame, and handlebars. The presence of the bicycle carving inside the temple remains an unexplained mystery. The only plausible explanation seems to be that the temple was renovated during the 1920s. This is around the same time that chain-driven bicycles entered mass production and became popular, so it's possible that an artist of the time thought it was a fine idea to deface an ancient temple by adding bicycle graffiti. That theory isn't proven, though, and anyone caught performing such an act of vandalism would likely have faced dire consequences. The Taj Mahal, an iconic masterpiece of Mughal architecture, stands as a testament to love and beauty in Agra, India. Built in the 17th century by Emperor Shah Jahan as a mausoleum for his beloved wife Mumtaz Mahal, it's world-renowned for its exquisite white marble craftsmanship and symmetrical design. However, behind its breathtaking facade lie intriguing mysteries that add to its allure. One enigma is the identity of the master architect. While it is widely believed to be Ustad Ahmad Lahori, some theories suggest that other architects from different parts of the world may have contributed to its construction. Another mystery surrounds the intricate inlay work on the walls. Legend has it that Emperor Shah Jahan ordered the hands of the artisans to be amputated after the completion of the Taj Mahal to ensure that no other masterpiece of its kind could be created. Additionally, the presence of hidden chambers within the mausoleum fuels speculation about concealed treasures and secret passages. These enigmatic aspects of the Taj Mahal's history continue to fascinate visitors and historians alike, adding an aura of mystique to this architectural marvel. The Castle Rig Stone Circle found within the stunning landscape of the Lake District in Cumbria, England, is another ancient marvel shrouded in mystery. Believed to have been constructed around 3000 BCE during the Neolithic period, this enigmatic stone circle is a testament to the early inhabitants of the British Isles' engineering prowess and spiritual beliefs. Comprising 38 stones arranged in an irregular manner, its purpose and significance remain unknown to this day. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Castle Rig Stone Circle is its astronomical alignment, as some stones are thought to align with celestial bodies, suggesting an association with astronomical observations and rituals. Another mystery lies in the origins and cultural context of the builders. While the building work is commonly attributed to the Neolithic people, the true identity of the circle's creators and their purpose for creating them remain uncertain. The exact rituals, ceremonies, and beliefs associated with the site are lost to time, leaving room for speculation and interpretation. 
The strangeness and mysterious history of the Castle Rig Stone Circle continue to draw visitors to the site, beckoning them into the ancient world that lingers within its silent stones. The abandoned city of Dado, located in the central Sahara of Niger, is a bewildering Saharan mystery. Standing almost defiantly in the middle of an inhospitable desert, this ancient fortified city holds many secrets waiting to be unraveled. Thought to have been constructed around 800 to 1,000 years ago, during a time when the Sahara was more fertile, Dado's origins and builders remain unknown. While some structures bear a resemblance to neighboring cultures, others remain enigmatic with their purpose shrouded in uncertainty. The city's impressive size sets it apart from other traditional fortified settlements known as Kassars found in North Africa. The last known inhabitants were the Kanuri people, but it's not known whether they built Dado or inherited it from an earlier culture. As the region became arid, lacking a clean water supply, the city was eventually abandoned. Today, Dado remains isolated and preserved only by the unforgiving desert, offering limited accessibility for archaeological exploration. Excavations at this site could potentially unveil the mysterious culture responsible for the grandeur of Dado and shed light onto the forgotten chapters of the Sahara's past. But getting to the site in order to study it is no easy feat. Next, we have the Ancient Stone Chambers in Vermont, New England, USA, a collection of enigmatic structures found throughout the state. These chambers consist of carefully placed stones arranged in a circular or rectangular shape, often with a corbelled roof. They are typically located in wooded areas, and their origins and purpose remain uncertain, leading to plenty of wild theories and speculations. These stone chambers have sparked curiosity and debate among researchers, historians, and locals alike. Some believe that they were built by Native American cultures, such as the Abenaki or Iroquois, for ceremonial or shelter purposes. Others propose that they were constructed by early European settlers, possibly as root cellars or storage spaces. One well-known stone chamber is the Mystery Hill, or America's Stonehenge, in Salem, New Hampshire which is often linked with the stone chambers in Vermont due to their similar architectural style and enigmatic origins. Despite plenty of efforts to study and understand these stone chambers, there is no consensus on their origins or precise function. The lack of documented history and the absence of clear archaeological evidence make it hard to definitively attribute them to a particular culture or time period. Archaeologists rushed to the site of Navan Fort in Northern Ireland in July 2020 when it was reported that evidence of monumentally large religious structures had been discovered there, hiding in plain sight. The findings of the experts responsible for the discovery say that the structures predate the arrival of Christianity to the area during the 5th century. Most of the structures can't be seen by the naked eye, but their presence has been revealed by modern technology with electrical resistance surveys and magnetic gradiometry allowing scientists to see the area in new ways. If the team is right about what's buried under the ground, they can be credited with finding some of the largest structures built anywhere in the world between two and 3,000 years ago. It appears that the entire hilltop once hosted an enormous enclosure shaped like a figure eight, with two smaller figure of eight shaped buildings inside it. The significance of the shape is unknown. Navan Fort is just outside the city of Armagh, a place that's long been considered to be the country's ecclesiastical capital. But it now seems that the religious history of the area goes back much further than that. We know that some of the ancient inhabitants of China loved making artifacts known as Jade Kongs. What we don't know is why. Countless examples of beautiful, elaborately decorated jade kongs have been found in the Zhejiang province of China, which suggests that they were created by the Nyangshu culture, which lived there during the Neolithic era. Each kong is a squared tube with a circular hole through the middle, although describing them in such basic terms doesn't do justice to the artifacts. Decorations on the objects differ from kong to kong, 
but a significant portion of them have human faces painted in the corners around the hole in the middle. It's been speculated that the faces represent spirits. The basis for that idea is that with very few exceptions, Jade Kongs are only ever found in tombs. They probably have a spiritual significance of some kind, but we can't even guess what that significance may have been. We also can't guess why the Kongs seem to have gone out of fashion almost overnight. They were ubiquitous until around 2,000 years ago, after which it doesn't seem that any more were ever made. Archaeologists are used to finding animal-shaped pots and vases inside ancient Chinese tombs, but this swan-shaped pot came with a riddle that experts are yet to get to the bottom of. The previously undisturbed pot contains a 2,000-year-old liquid, and we currently have no idea what the fluid is. The discovery arrived almost by accident. It came when construction workers in San Mechia in the Henan province came across a previously unknown grave and called in the experts to take a closer look. Along with the swan pot, they also found a bronze helmet, an iron sword, and a jade ceremonial sword so this was likely the final resting place of a soldier or warrior. The pot, though, is somewhat incongruous with the rest of the discoveries. It's the only bronze pot ever found in this part of China, and so that, coupled with the fact that it contains an unidentifiable liquid, has got archaeologists very excited. The fluid, of which there was around 3,000 millimeters, has been described as yellowish-brown and containing impurities. It could be anything from ancient wine to the fabled and long-sought-after Chinese elixir of life. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon!